in his presence, I'm going to read as we're still standing from Genesis 16. And the word of God says in Genesis 16, from verse 1 to 8 and 10 to 13, I'm going to read. And then I'm going to jump down to Genesis 21. The word of God says from Genesis 16, Now Sarah, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children. You can put up the NIV. Genesis 16. Now Sarah, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar, or Hagar. And Sarah said to Abram, Behold, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abraham listened to the voice of Sarah. So Abraham had lived 10 years in the land of Canaan. Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, her, her husband, as, as a wife. And he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. And Sarah said to Abram, may the Lord, uh, say, may, sorry, may the wrong be wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to him your embrace and when she saw that she had conceived she looked on me with contempt may the lord judge between you and me but abraham said to sarah behold your servant is in your power do to her as you please so sarah dealt harshly with her and she fled from her and the angel of the lord found her that is hagar by a spring of water in the wilderness the spring on the way to shur and he said Hagar, servant of Sarah, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress, Sarah. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so they cannot be numbered for, for, uh, be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. I'm going to repeat that again. Because the Lord has listened to your affliction. And I jump down. It says, So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are God of seeing. For she said, Truly, I have seen him who looks after me. And then we go into uh, Genesis chapter 21 and verse 13 to 19. And what happens here is now Isaac and Ishmael are born. And, um, and uh, Sarah felt or she saw that Ishmael had laughed and she felt like, you know, there might be concern to have Ishmael still in the house. And so, again, uh, she, um, she basically said she has to go. And then in Genesis 21 from 13, it says, uh, the Lord says to Abraham, and I will make a nation of the son of the slave woman also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and the skin of water and gave to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness. Uh, and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And when the water in the skin was gone, she put the child under, the, under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. And she said, let not... Let me not look on the death of the child. And she sat, and she, and as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard 
the voice of the boy. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is up. Sorry, where he is up. Lift up the boy, hold him fast, and with your hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. I'm going to stop reading right there. As God's word is blessed in Jesus' name, we can have a seat in this house. Amen. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. There's a couple key things we're going to point out this Sunday um, in the house of God. First of all, we are, for the month of February, um, Gonna, we will be emphasizing, actually every month for the next couple of months, we're going to make sure we understand that we know that God sees each one of us. And what I mean by that, as a female, as a woman, as a man, as a youth, um, as a child, we're going to go through each month looking at or allowing us to really reflect and know that God is which e e each one of us and is calling us each each one of us out. So this month we'll be emphasizing calling out, calling up our women in the house of the God, in the house of the Lord. Amen. Genesis 5, 1 to 2 lets us know that we uh, when when God created man, he created him in the likeness of God, male and female, he created them and he blessed them and gave the uh, gave and named the men man when they were created. We learn that we are all created for God's glory. We learn that in the Bible of God. We are all created for God's glory, each and every one of us. We are not a need for God, per se, because God is self-existent. That is God, his character. He is self-existent, yet we, with all creation, are created to glorify God and bring God joy. Emphasis, uh, Ephesians 1 my favorite, I think it's one of my favorite chapters in the, the Bible, Ephesians 1, 11 to 12, I'm reading from the message here, reads, it is in Christ that we find out we are who we are and what we are living for. Long before we heard of Christ and got our, our hopes up, he, Christ, had his eyes on us, had designs for us, uh, sorry, for had designs on us for glorious living to be praise of his glory part of the overall purpose he is working out in each and every one of us so we're created to give god glory and we actually bring god joy Not because God needs us, but because God created us for his glory, to glorify God. And because of that, we have to also understand that we actually are important. We're important to God. So important that God ensured that through Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus, we can glorify God for all eternity. God set that up for us. That in Christ, we can glorify God for all eternity. That's how important each and every one of us are to God. Yes, he doesn't need us, but he desires that we glorify him. And that's how what we are created. Um, that's what we are created for. As we glorify him, God enjoys us. The Bible tells us that he rejoices in us. Isaiah 62 verse 5 says, For as a young man marries a young woman, so shall your sons marry you. As the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Amen. I just wanted to start it with that reminder that we're created to give God glory and that we, and God rejoices in us. And there's a joy that we can have on earth. Amen. I started off with that reminder because you know what? In this world, we see and we feel the weight of a lot of things. Pastor Marine actually started off and said uh, in, in praise and worship, she acknowledge some of the weight that she's been feeling. A lot of things are not very joyful in our day to day. Living can come so casual and, and the stressors of the day 
can pile up and we no longer see things or we don't even see that we're actually glorifying God. We don't, we don't see that. You know, outside of perhaps, you know, we come to church, we made it through and we, we give God glory on a Sunday and we may have spent time in his presence in the week. Our, our day-to-day life, sometimes we're like, we're, we, don't, we don't feel like we're doing anything that's, uh, that glorifies God or, or even uh, the situation that we find ourselves in, we're like, we seem so far from God. We might, as ladies particularly, because we're going to talk to ladies a bit this month, as ladies, we can become overwhelmed. We can become overwhelmed with what's going on in life, with a variety of responsibilities, the feelings of, 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 of you know, where we need to be, or, or the feelings of just maybe not even feeling successful or adequate. In our mind, we're measuring up to so many things in every area of our life. And, and, you know, it, it, can, it can overwhelm, it overshadows. It overshadows what, when we don't even recognize it. We actually are created in the likeness of God to glorify God. And we, we, we are vessels of honor for God. And so, interestingly enough, I actually want to start off this month looking at, at Hagar. It's not a typical you know, woman, you're called out per se. But Hagar was in an oppressive situation. And I'm going to say that not all of her circumstances she could have prevented. Not all. She's an Egyptian. She's a maidservant. There's no way that she could say, oh, well, I'm not going to be Egyptian. You know, there's no way that she could say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be born here. Right? She's a maid servant, um, in, in essence, a slave, which none of those things she possibly could have prevented. She's in life. She's, just, she's in life. This is what, this is the steps, this is where she is. You know, some of us, we may regret where we come from or how we came into this world. And really, we can't control those things. We, you know, maybe some of us could have controlled the career we're in or the job we're in. Yeah, yeah we could have possibly made different choices, but we made some choices and this is where we are. And you know, sometimes because of that, we start comparing ourselves, comparing our education, saying we could have done this or we could have done that. And it's not that we don't wanna aspire to things, but if our mindset is, you know, always in a position of lack, it's a very hard thing. So if I decide, I decided I wanna get education, and yes, it's because I wanna aspire to do A, B, and C, I, I, I have that aspiration. However, if I des- desi- desire it because I feel like I'm not measuring up, I'm never going to measure up because as soon as I get something, as one form of education, somebody else might have another form. And then all of a sudden I'm trying to measure up. You can have aspirations and, and dreams and desires and that's a very good thing, but we don't want to be looking at it to measure up to people because ne- you're never going to be able to measure up. You're looking at it as I'm. I'm glad that I have this opportunity, and that opportunity gives me is allows me to be in places that I can glorify God in even other ways. Amen. So it becomes a trap when we start looking at our our circumstances or looking at where we are um, to to try and measure up. And the truth is, some of us may have even made some sinfully bad choices at time. And some of us, no choice. We made no choices, but we're just in some situations. But at the end of the day, we are in this life, and there is our, the sovereignty of God, and, but there, there is also sin. And so the Bible says that Hagar fled from the harsh treatment of Sarah after she saw that she was pregnant. And when she fled, God spoke to her and gave her instructions to go back. Um, I, I think I might have, I didn't read that whole part, but basically God gave her in that same uh, chapter 16, God gave her instructions to actually go back. And she gave her instructions to go back um, because she will bear a son. And she, and he says to her, she is also blessed. She is blessed. Sarah is blessed, but you are blessed. Why? Because God listened to her affliction. God heard 
her situation. And he says, wait a minute, you are blessed. You're my child, still you are blessed. Yes, it might be a different avenue, but at the end of the day, you are still blessed. And so it says, the word says, God listened to her affliction. Because God listened to her affliction, he answered her. And then we read in chapter 21 that after um, um, they, uh, they sent, uh, this time Sarah sends her off. First time she ran away. Second time Sarah says, no, enough of this. You're off. You're not coming back. Um, the Bible says God heard the voice of the boy. Those heard and listened. Those two actually in this context come from the same Hebrew word, which means, which um, is shama, meaning hear with attention. So God was turned with attention to Hagar's affliction. And he heard the request of Hagar in her need and in her child's distress. Now listen, she wasn't in a good position. She didn't even know really the promises of God over her life. But in her situation, she learned and confessed that she had a revelation of God. And so our situations don't, are not to stir us away from God. Our circumstances are not to stir us away from God. Her revelation says, she, she, so she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, you are a God of seeing. El Rohi, oh, El Roha, Rohi, a God of seeing, for she said, truly here I have seen him who looks after me. There's three points that we're going to take from Haggai's life for this morning. The first one is what we, what God has shown us about him. God is both infinite and personal. And he wants us to know that this morning. God is both infinite and personal. What I mean by that, God is not subject to the limitations of humanity or of creation, because God is the creator. He is far greater than everything he has made, far greater than anything that exists. But also God, and also, I won't say but, but I'll say, and also God is personal. He interacts with us as a person, and we can relate to him as people. We can relate to him, we can pray, we can worship him, we can love him, we can speak to God, we can hear God and, and God loves us. That's important because it's one thing to have, you know, we, there's gods of this world and they'll say, oh, they're, they're um, touchless or holy or matchless, you know, you don't wanna. But it's another thing to understand that God Almighty is not only God Almighty, infinite, but also God who sees and knows and knows each one of us. And also, as we know, Christ came on earth and, and knew no sin that we could become his righteousness. And, but he, God went, Jesus went through emotions on earth. Jesus went through circumstances on earth, insults or, and experienced insults and love on earth, experience relationships and rejection. And that's for us to re be reminded that God sees us in every situation or every circumstance or every life that we're in or every position that we are in. God sees us. The second point about Hagar's life is not only does is God uh, see us, but God or God is both infinite and personal, which means that he sees us as a person and, and relates to us individually. Our personal individual situations, those are situations that we happen to end up in or find ourselves in or may not have, shouldn't have put ourselves in, but are in there anyways, um, exists for us to have a unique encounter with God. Our individual situations exist for us to have a unique encounter with God. God sees and he sees us. He sees you individually and personally. Hagar's situation brought forth this revelation. Her affliction cried out to God. 
And when she responded to the voice of God, she received the instructions and then for her to go out, uh, to, to continue those instructions. She sought God because of her affliction and then she responded to his word. We, we can look at our situations and some of our situations that can seem very heavy and dire. And it will start to feel heavy on us because really when you keep looking at situ situations, it just gets bigger and it blooms in front of us. Our circumstances can weigh us down. But we have to understand that God is saying right here, listen, I, I can see you in your affliction. And not only can I see you in your affliction, but I can answer you in your affliction. I can speak to you in your situation. And we might not always like the answer because Hagar had to go back. But it's to know that God has created that unique experience in your life to, have, to, grow, to grow your relationship with him. How many people can say they saw God? Hagar, how many people back then could have said, I saw God. God sees me and I know that not only God sees me and I saw God in that situation. So God is both infinite and personal. Our personal individual situations exist for us to have a unique encounter with God. And that, that's for us to shift our perspective a bit because we all are going to go through it's life. We're going to go through things. We're going to go through highs, lows, in-betweens. Maybe sometimes just feeling like, um, you know, every day just seems like mundane. But what we, if we understand or come to the perspective that that's God calling us even closer to him. God's saying, wait a minute, I see you. Hagar's situation was very different. Um, from Sarah. Even Sarah had a situation. Truthfully, they both had situations. They're all going through situations, to be honest. We might look at her story, but you also have Sarah's story going on in the background where she, you know, she's, she doesn't think God is with her. And eventually she will see God will show up in her life too. Very different positions, very different circumstances extremely different but they both were experiencing hardship they both were experiencing uh, uh, I don't know you could almost say they could say they felt mocked by the enemy you know feel mocked their circumstances this doesn't look good doesn't doesn't feel good I can't, I can't have a child this is this is uh, you know I'm with my husband and I can't have a child and then on top of that uh, uh, Hagar has a child and then she's like this doesn't look good because now I'm bearing children and I'm just treated like dirt, really. But God, even in those situations, sees and answers. The third thing about Hagar is that our response must be obedience. The third th point that we're gonna take, there's three points, that's the three points. God is both infinite and personal. That's our reminder to us that God is for, is not just God um, overall not seeing us. He knows every hair on our head is accounted for. That's how much God loves and sees us. Amen. Two, our personal, personal individual situation exists for us to have a unique encounter with God. And three, our response must be obedience. What I mean by that? Uh, Hagar said, uh, uh, God said to, to Hagar, uh, or in that, all that time, you know, go back, go back to her, go back there. You, you don't, do not worry, go back. Um, you, um, you're going to be blessed. Your child is blessed. Um, and is a miracle in itself, the multitude. And it, to be honest, if you look at it, Sarah was blessed too. They both were had a blessing. They're very different, but they both were blessed because... We're children of God. So our circumstances, our life will honor God 
when we look back to him. Amen? So our response must be obedience. Obedience brings honor to God and is a form of worship as it shows trust in God to those around us. Sometimes we're obedient to many things. But when we're in the fire, when we're in the struggle, when we're frustrated, are we looking for our answers in God? Are we looking? And are we responding to those answers regardless of what the, the instruction might be? She, her, her, her instruction was to go back, have that child, um, and dwell there until something else happens. And she, she ended up getting kicked out anyways, but, it was <laughs> but uh, the difference is in obedience, she was able to now know and not worry because she's like, you know what? God said that this child, that I'm blessed and this child's going to be blessed. Even when she got kicked out, it looked dire again. She's ready to see the child die, but there was already a, a blessing pronounced, right? And so our response must be obedience to God. And what I mean by that is many times we might say, oh, I don't know what to do in my frustrations. Oh, I don't know what to do in my struggles. But we have to actually look to God for an answer. And there will be instructions. God will give answers. God will give answers for us to follow, and it will align with his word. His answers will always align with his word. And when I say obedience, I also mean because that means that we actually are doing something. So there is an act that follows. So in our struggles, in our situations, there is an act. There is something that we do as long as we do it in Christ. Amen? Amen. There's two more, one more thing that we're going to point out with Hagar's life this Sunday, and then we're going to um, take this time to really reflect in his presence and going to call praise and worship team back. One thing we have to know is that obedience, obedience and, and surrendering to God might not always look pretty. And it might not even make sense at times for her to go back into a situation um, where she's going to continue to feel low, right? And she's going to continue to feel oppressed and continue to be reminded of all the things that they say she is or Sarah might see her as. But it also shows our trust in God. And there's a difference when we put our trust in God and know that, you know what, I know that God sees me. I know that God knows me and, and is hearing my heart, hearing my afflictions, hearing my concerns. And that I continually look to God to say, these are my concerns. And I understand that there is no... Uh, what a powerful name the name of Jesus is. There's no name above it. So these circumstances, as much as they overwhelm, as much as there's names that don't match who I am, um, I realize in obedience, God will come true. Amen? So what are we, what are, what, uh, sorry, when we're in our frustrations, in our struggles, are we looking for our answers in God? Are we looking for answers in God, in our situations, in our down, in our ups and downs? Are we looking for answers in God? That's the question. Are we? Hagar might not necess necessarily have been looking, but because of those afflictions, God heard and answered. And we are reminded this day that God sees. Ladies, God sees. God sees you. He sees me. He sees you. What does that mean? That means, you know, in this world where you might feel like there's so many of, uh, you know, other people naming or calling you certain things, God sees you for who you are. And that means that we're that very, you know, we are created in the likeness of God. That's that's powerful. God sees you and has placed you in 
this time and in this life to flourish. And it's not a pressure of measuring up, but it's a pressure of letting the circumstances, the afflictions, the emotions, everything that you're feeling to be laid before God for him to show you who you really are and allow you to flourish also. Amen? So last point that I'm going to make before we, we uh, pray this uh, afternoon. Gen back in Genesis 16, the word of God says, and w he went into Hagar, that's Abraham, and she conceived, right? And then the word says, and when she saw that she had conceived, that's Hagar. When Hagar saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt to Sarah. Contempt. And Sarah said to Abraham, may the wrong be done to you. My, I, I gave you my servant to your embrace. And when she saw that she conceived, she looked at me with contempt. And then Sarah treated her harshly. Our circumstances, and this is, this is one point we're going to pray about this morning, our circumstances can cause us to develop frustrations. Our circumstances, our situations, whether it's something that's piling up from year to year, or whether it's like you, you just, you feel like the way, you, like from the time you were born, you know, I don't know, your path or trajectory just felt like it's, it's frustrating, or if it's just the moment of time of where you're in right now um, and where have you found yourself right now. And it says, it fresh, can frustrate you. But not only can they develop frustration, the frustration, when we keep carrying it, it turns into anger. And then the anger starts being what, what's living inside of us. She turned to her mistress with contempt. She was angry. Not only as a circumstance, she's already a, a, a maid servant, but now on top of that, she's about to have a child. And instead of the joy of a child, some people would be happy to, be, to have a child because maybe she wouldn't have had that circumstance because she's a maid servant. She was never going anywhere to get married. But all she could see was a situation and it made her angry. And not only that, but the response to the anger was more anger. Sarah's response was now she's angry. She, so we got two angry people here. Cir cir circumstances, not just frustration, but now anger. We can't let our circumstances, we can't let our situations build up the anger because because it, it doesn't, the response, what she ended up getting kicked out because of that anger within her. The anger within her, the anger within Sarah. All it did was produce more anger. We can't allow our circumstances, our situations, to continually frustrate us to the point where now anger has seeped in and is rooted in us. We got to lay that before God. We gotta lay that before God. I say that because there's many emotions in us. We're, be, we're beings or humans of emotions. We're created with emotions. And I say that because anger, there's a lot of things that anger can fester and it will manifest in so many ways. We know even psychologically, eventually, it can, it, it can affect our health and it can affect our mindset. But God wants us to be reminded this day that even in our situation, he sees us. And therefore, we don't have to live in resentment. We don't have to live in anger. We don't have to live in frustration. But it's for us to turn our mindset to know that in whatever situation we're in, it's an opportunity for us to experience the hand of God. It's an opportunity for us to have a revelation of God. Hagar had a revelation of God, one that's very special. I don't know how many times, I haven't checked, but I don't really know how many times somebody can 
declare, God sees me and I saw God. But if we allow the anger and the frustration, you guys can come at this time. If we allow those things to fester in our life and not lay it down, we're not actually following obedience. We're not actually putting our trust in God. And now I'm not saying that it's going to take, you know, one moment for you to just get rid of anger or to allow joy to manifest more than frustrations and anger. I'm not saying it's going to take one moment. But it is going to take a step of honesty in God's presence. God has called us ladies. God has called us. God has called each one of us. God has positioned us. The, um, we understand that it's only the woman that has the womb. We understand that there's very specific, as much as everybody has, uh, I mean, males have their calling, women have a special calling too in the spirit and in the natural. And so we can't allow the frustrations of our position, frustrations of, you know, as, 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 as women, we can be frustrated about many things. The amount of uh, just life, you don't even have to have been married yet. You're frustrated by nature. There are certain ways that you think as a woman that will frustrate and feel like it's too much. We have roles at work. We have roles in the home. We have roles um, in, in our family, our extended family. And these roles are actually blessings. But because of life, they're frustrating. <laughs> because of life, they're frustrating us. Frustrating us. And some of us get to the point of anger. But actually, God is saying, look, I see you. And because I see you, I want you to remember to lay it before me. Because actually, your life is a blessing. You're, you, you are a blessing because you're my child. You're my child. You're my daughter. Your life is blessed. I don't know how many people would say Hagar's life is blessed. An um, Egyptian servant, I, I don't really know. But God said it. And she birthed nation. But the world's perspective, we'd be like, oh, that's not a blessed life. Mm. Those circumstances, that's modern day drama. How <laughs> she got pregnant? Man, that's drama. That lots of people would love to talk about. There's so many ways, uh, hats that we wear. There's so many positions for women to bear. Man, I'm not leaving you out, but today is Women's Day, so you know. <laughs> and sometimes that weight feels burdensome, and we forget that we are blessed. We are called. Every hair on our head is accounted for also. And so I encourage us this day to not only, if, whether it's when you're crying out or when it's when you're smiling, to know that God sees you. He hears you. 
He hears your circumstances. He hears your affliction. He hears your cry. He hears your joy. God hears and sees you. And that's important for us to know and remember this day. And because of that, we can rise up and allow whatever is within us to be rested before God. It might take talking to somebody for a bit. It might take a mix of praying, sharing, leaning on until we get to that place where we're encouraged. We might have to hear the voice of God again as Hagar had to hear a second time. She felt like she was back in, out there again, not knowing where to go, and the water came. God showed her. The water was there. God showed her the well. God revealed that to her. Remove the affliction from her eyesight so that she could see the blessing, the well, the restoration, so that she could see. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's remember that this morning or this afternoon as we close in prayer. If you want to be, if you're asking for prayer specifically, we will um, invite the ministers also at this time to come as we close in prayer. But God's reminding us this day not only is God almighty and infinite but he also is personal we all have situations and afflictions and our way of life might seem daunting or not promising or where we are we don't like what we look like right now but that's pointing us to a unique encounter with God, a unique testimony in God. My testimony is not going to be Pastor Marine's testimony. Actually, Pastor Marine's testimony and, and Minister Nicole's testimony is not even going to be the same. And they have the same mother. And their testimony will not be the same. Their situations will not be the same. Because God sees us uniquely and answers and three we need to be obedient in surrendering obedient in hearing his voice obedient in following his word obedient if we need help with understanding where it is to be obedient that's what the house of god is for that's what the um, brothers and sisters in Christ are for. That's what prayer is for. That's what worship is for. That's what we learn and continue to learn. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Let us stand. He is here. For in the 
sweet 